Hi, I'm Nate Adams, and this is the cover of the Insulation Types chapter for my book, which you can download for free below. But I think it's much more interesting to actually see the information from this applied to an actual project. So here's one we finished up recently. This client had a really bad icicle and ice damming problem, which you can see right here, and that leaked a lot of water into the house. Now this can cause all kinds of problems. I've seen termite problems come from this, mold, the ceiling can fall in from it. Uh, obviously water damage stinks in general. You can get insurance claims. This is a really frustrating thing in my part of the country. Uh, now the great thing is I think we have this problem licked because we've done enough of these projects. So even though I haven't seen it through the winter, I'll get feedback from him. We'll get pictures but uh, he should see a 60 to 80% reduction in his icicles. You can never totally get rid of them, but boy, can you make a big difference, enough to where they aren't worrisome anymore. Uh, but we did this, and we didn't change the R values that much. So it, with all those icicles, it had this insulation in there. It's an R19. It's not that much, but it can work if you do it right. So we replaced it with R25 spray foam. So note that this is not a lot more. Uh, and a lot of people will recommend substantially higher R values than this. For some instances it makes sense, but in this project it really wasn't necessary. Uh, but don't take my word for it. Uh, we need to look at measurements and then feedback from the client. So this house is much, much tighter now. We started at 3500 on the blower door and we got to 1250 that's a 64% reduction in leakage. I cannot overstress how important reducing the air leakage of your house is. If you are worried about insulation types, but you are not worried about reducing the insulation, or sorry, the air sealing in your house and measuring where you got to, your likelihood of failure and wasting a ton of money is really high. Please make sure that you are tightening your house. Now, again, don't take my word for this. This is the client's feedback from the summer after we did the project. The upstairs, even with a window air conditioner in the summer, used to be at least 5 to 10 degrees warmer than downstairs. Now it's the same temperature upstairs in town. I love getting feedback like this, but I also like to measure and see what's going on. So we use tools called a FUBOT. They're indoor air quality monitors that measure temperature, humidity, chemical pollutants, and dust in your house. Those are really helpful at helping us understand if your house is healthy after the project. So this is one that I kind of cheated and I put it in my garage where you're not really supposed to, but it's nice because I can see what outdoor temperature is and it's not totally exact because this is probably more like an 80 degree day even though it shows 92 because the sun is on it. But this is the peak of when buildings are warmest in the day. So I can see where the peaks are each day. So let's take a look at this day in John's house. So here we are, there's upstairs at almost 76, the basement at 73, and the first floor at almost 72. Now the split between the first and second floor, this is the biggest one I could find, it's 4.2 degrees. Uh, this is largely because they have not changed their HVAC yet, and it doesn't have capabilities that I'm looking for. But it used to be five or 10 degrees minimum, we're down to four on a fairly warm day. Let's take a look at the next day though, uh, because this is more what I saw in the data. So the next day, instead of a 92 peak, it was an 87. But take a look at the temperatures here. This house is running really similar in temperature, and you can see it off over here where it's fairly uh, similar. In fact, for whatever reason, this day the temperature crashed on the second floor, so it was considerably lower than the first. But here you can see the upstairs and the kitchen are only a degree apart. If you see temperature differences of more than two to three degrees between any two parts of your house, something's wrong. Here's an example of a house that was built in the mid-40s with an addition in the 90s uh, that has been fixed using home performance techniques and by choosing the right types of insulation at the right air ceiling. So when it comes to measuring insulation, you may hear about green, uh, you may hear about R-value. Here's what I care about. 
first, is it effective? Does it do its job? Does it make the house comfortable? Do energy bills drop? Is it healthier? These are the things I want to know. Second, can it be installed well and fairly easily? So with a minimum of training. Um, and third, is it easily available? That's how I measure things, and you'll see that through this chapter. But I, I can't encourage you enough to do your homework and think about air sealing above all, even well beyond what type of insulation you're going to use. So all that information is in this free chapter, which again, you can download below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Tell me what you're thinking. Uh, does this make sense? Do I sound crazy? Uh, what's going through your head. I'd love to interact with you. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Nate Adams.